Well, wild card weekend is here in the NFL playoffs. And starting off, we're going to talk about the Seattle Seahawks going to Arlington to face those Dallas Cowboys. Wait, Your wait, wait. Dallas Cowboys. What? The NFC East champion. Oh, yeah. Dallas Cowboys. I just had to say that for the guests we have this week. Joining us is Adrian Fecchio of the Bitterbirds. Welcome, Adrian. Oh, what's up, fellas? You know, hey, listen, you won the NFC East, but the Eagles are going to go further in the playoffs. So okay. enjoy it while it lasts. We'll see. Okay. And also joining us is <laughs> the King Ding Bad himself, Philly 500. What up, Philly? Hello, everybody. How you doing? Josh, Sean, Adrian, what's going on? Thank you for having me. This is going to be a wonderful, wonderful playoffs as my Eagles get ready to make another run. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that Run eventually. back home. Run but back I home. Think they're going to be disappointed. Yeah, just a little. But are <laughs> you going to be disappointed in here in this wild card matchup on Saturday night? Y'all have the night game Saturday. The Dallas Cowboys are just slight favorites here yeah. in this game. Now, the last time they met the Seattle Seahawks, they defeated the Cowboys 24-13 to in Seattle. Yeah. But I think both teams are looking a little bit different than that week three matchup. Sure. So uh, let's kick it off with uh, Adrian FedQ right off the bat. Your first thoughts going into this game. Yeah, you know, uh, those two teams played all the way back in week three. Uh, so definitely a long time ago. The, the one thing that I got to say about this Seahawks team, really impressed with how, how the offensive line really came together. This, this was a unit that for the last two, three years – just hasn't been able to protect Russell Wilson. And you've really just seen this line come together. And you, you got this fivesome of Dwayne Brown, J.R. Sweezy, Justin Britt, uh, I believe who they got, or Fetty, and then, and then the, the right guard. I can't even name you the five. But they've all gelled together. They've been great this year. And then the, the defense. I mean, you had to replace all these pieces. Cam Chancellor, uh, Earl Thomas got hurt, and, and, and the defensive line, Michael Bennett. And you've got guys like, like Frank Clark just – just causing havoc. Bobby Wagner having a career year, probably the best year of his career. Shaquille Griffin, a great cornerback for them. So just uh, a great performance by the Seahawks as a team, considering uh, heading into the year, I didn't really have a lot of stock into them. Uh, so the Seattle man, this, this, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. So, yeah. But a lot, a lot of interesting thoughts there on, on Seattle on my front, and, and just really surprised with how they came together this year. Thank you, man. We we agree with you, man. We were right there with you. Going into the year, oh. our stock on the Seattle Seahawks was very down. I was I was shocked. Yeah. Well, that was one yeah. team we were really wrong on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Credit to Pete Carroll, who's uh, you know great coach over there. Yeah. And here they are in the playoffs yet again. Philly 500, your first thoughts going to this game? Well, I mean, look, you, you can't ever count out Russell Wilson. I mean, the guy, the guy continues to impress year in, year out. Just, I'm always impressed with everything he does. They got Baldwin yeah. back, I believe now, and and he looks like he's he's you know doing good. So I think Seattle getting the playoffs is a big surprise. I didn't think they would get in, um, but they're in and, and they're a formidable team. Now they're going to go up against a team in Dallas that they beat earlier in the year. But the difference with this game is Dallas is at home. To me, Dallas is a different team at home than they are on the road. So I think that this is going to be a very, very good game, a very back-and-forth game, a close game. And to me, it's all going to come down to how committed will the Dallas Cowboys be to running the ball with Zeke. If they stay committed and they run, I think I think they're going to, to they're going to do good. Yeah, Zeke um, had that week three game, too, as well. So right. just point that out. Yeah, yeah you, you're just – uh, uh, Philly 500 was mentioning the uh, Dallas Cowboys at home. They are. They're one of the best home teams this year. Sean, you yeah. know this. Yeah. Only one loss at home. Just one, and that was to the Tennessee Titans. And they beat all of us in the NFC, so they, they just had our numbers. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's the only loss we have. Okay, so I want to talk about the Dallas Cowboys offense going up against the Seattle defense. Yes. As FedQ was talking about, the, the, the defense this year, they really stepped it up. We didn't think that they were going to be this, this good going into this year. What are they Bobby Wagner, he's got to be uh, considered for uh, Defensive Player of the Year yeah. award. Yeah. Um, for sure. So, Dak Prescott, this offense, Sean, how do you see them going against these uh, Seattle Seahawks defense? I mean, because yeah. Zeke, the last time around, 127 yards, zero touchdowns, and he yeah. lost a fumble in that game. 
Yeah, he did. And that doesn't happen often, so you can't count on him fumbling again. He does not fumble often at all. Now, I'm looking at this game, and I'm looking at the numbers, and last time, their defense did great against us. Dak had two interceptions, but guess who those two interceptions are to? Hmm. Earl Thomas. Earl Thomas? He ain't in there no more. (laughs) That sucks. That's sad, you know, obviously. I love Earl Thomas, but he's not in there this time. They don't have – nobody can compare to Earl Thomas, right? So – I, that's the thing. Dak didn't play that great. He had 168 yards. R- Ezekiel still had 127 yards rushing. That's still pretty damn good. On only 16 carries. Dak was also sacked five times in that game. Yeah. Dak Prescott, the most sacked quarterback going uh, that, into the playoffs, man. That's rough. But at l- least we got a good week to get Zach Martin healthy and Tyron Smith back. Mm-hmm. So both those sat out week 17, so both of them should be fresh coming into this game. Are you worried about that offensive line, man? Because I, like I just mentioned, Dak Prescott, he's getting hit oh, way too much. No doubt, dude. I, I'm not – I'm never confident. Dak is Dak is one of the worst at fumbling the ball when he gets sacked, too. That's one of his biggest things over the last couple of years mm-hmm. has been. Uh, and now, is that on the offensive line more than him? It could be a little bit of both. He holds on to the ball way too much. He does. He needs to start running the ball. That's going to be key in this game is if he knows when to scramble. Adrian, are you worried about the Cowboys' offense uh, going into this game at all? Well, it, the, the interesting matchup here, I mean, I already talked about Frank Clark already, but Frank Clark against Tyron Smith, that, that's going to be awesome uh, just yeah. as, as a football fan to watch, to watch that. Uh, I, I think they're going to be able to run the ball. I mean, they, they, they had the success earlier on in the season. They, they can kind of get Zeke going whenever they really want to. Yeah. But in, in terms of getting the pass game going, uh, it, it's going to depend on, on you know Frank Clark and the, and the rest of that pass rush. Can they dictate it again? If they can dictate the pass rush, then I think Dak's going to struggle. If, if, if the offensive line is able to give him time, I think Amari Cooper can get free. I mean, I like Shaquille Griffin. I, I, I like some of the cornerbacks, but they're not the greatest cornerbacks in the world there in Seattle. So I, I think Amari could, you know, beat Griffin for, for some couple deep plays if he gets that protection. But as we've seen this year, Dak has taken the most sacks, and offensive line hasn't been as great as it's been in years past. I, I think this Seattle defensive line and, and this front seven can get after Dak a little bit. Okay. So, yeah. your thoughts, man? I mean, yeah. I, I like I think that the whole key is going to be third and short for Dallas. If they get in third and short, using the run, they'll be able to keep drives alive, to keep yeah. Russell Wilson off the field. I don't yeah. think Seattle as a whole team, especially defensively, I don't think they play the same way they do in Seattle. There's just a different they're just different. Um and I think the whole I think the whole key to this offense is is can Dallas run the ball? And I think they'll be able to do that. They'll keep drives alive with third and short. And then eventually I think that will open things up for Mari Cooper and stuff like that. I I really think this is all about Zeke Elliott, in, in my opinion. Sean, so talk more about that, man. Like, Mari Cooper. So, the, this when he came to Dallas, yeah. he completely changed that culture of that offense. Com- a completely changed. Our third down conversion rate went from 30% to 40 in like Which mid-40s, Which really high 500 40s. was saying that you got to – Watch out for that. Those yeah. third down conversions. Oh, yeah. You gotta and, convert that shit, man. And like FedQ said, the, the route running from Amari Cooper is we've seen since he came to Dallas has been great. He's been one of the best route runners. He's shaking people off the line. Nobody can cover. So it's not even just deep routes. It's in routes. It's slant routes. And that's what's been key. Now I think Amari Cooper is going to be important here, and I know Seattle's going to be focused on him. I think what kind of going from week seventeen and what I saw without Zeke. I think we got to get Cole Beasley back involved, and he had a great game against the New York Giants. I like Cole Beasley, and I, if we can, I think he's going to be the key here. I think getting the ball out of his hands quick because we can't let. We've been getting sacked so much. We know that. That's obvious here. Get the ball out quick. Get hit some plays to Amari Cooper on some play actions and some deep deep in routes. But I want to see Cole Beasley have at least seven eight catches this game. Mm-hmm. Well, we got to get quick because it, it's yeah. uh, the, the cornerbacks i mean you, they're starting trey flowers at at yeah. the right cornerback spot he's like a fifth round rookie yeah so it's it, you can beat that secondary in seattle no Earl oh, thomas yeah. anymore yeah. i like brad mcdougall i mean he's he's solid but you look at the other safety it's tedrick thompson i believe yeah and, and you got delano hill too in the mix so yeah. it, you can you can beat that secondary if you protect dak yeah, that's right. that's you this game because you'll be able to run the ball and if, yeah. if you run the ball and and then you can also throw the ball then then you're going to look at putting up about you know 24 something points and i, I think yeah. that'll be in, to beat seattle yeah 
Hey, Michael Gallup, uh, they're probably going to have Gr uh, Griffith on uh, on Amari Cooper, obviously. And Gallup and Dak have had a pretty damn good connection. Yeah, they have. Especially deep pass. He's missed a few, but he's hit some dimes to Michael Gallup. Mm -hmm. So him and Gallup, they keep making plays here and there throughout the game, making big plays when needed. And that's going to be key. Because I've seen this. This is what I've seen out of the Cowboys offense. They'll make some big plays, but then they'll kill each, kill it with the with penalties, with holdings. And from Tyron Smith, yep. I've never seen so many holding calls in Tyron Smith this year, ever. Mm -hmm. Ever. That, so. that was uh, the problem with the Eagles, like, all season long until the last month. Yeah. You know, they, they get a good drive going, and then, like, they get inside the, the red zone, and then you get a holding penalty, and you're first and 20, and then you're, you're settling for a field goal. And it's frustrating. Yeah. yeah. It, the, th the key is, is I'm doing, week 17, us being the Giants, I know it was a divisional game, but without Zeke, that may, and without Tyron Smith, and Zach Martin, that I was impressive. That was impressive for Dak. Dak. Yeah, Dak. So that really was. That's confidence, and that's exactly why he needed to play and needed to get that win. And even though people were like, "Why are you starting and why are you playing him?" It's because of confidence going in the playoffs. You cannot, you cannot and he not has have that. confidence. He has that now. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't think that this uh, uh, running game for the Dallas Cowboys is going to be anything like that Week Three matchup at all. Yeah, like Adrian was saying, you were saying, uh, Zeke is going to he's going to have himself a, a beastly game right here. Yeah. At home in the playoffs. Philly 500, before we move on, you got anything else to say about this Cowboys offense? You think Dak is going to – he's got that confidence going this game? He's going to be playing all right? I, 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 mean, I, I, mean, I mean, I guess I, the way I see it is is that the pressure – if they run the ball effectively and they keep Dak in third and short situations, I think that, that he ain't going to have a lot of pressure on him. Um, I think that's the key to Dallas is, you know, if he's in third and long, third and eight – Third and eleven, third and ten. I think he's gonna. I think that's where Seattle has him. I think that's where they can get to him. Yeah. But I think that to me, when I watch the Dallas Cowboys, it, it always seems like when they get in third and under five, they they are able to move the ball efficiently. Um, uh, but you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how Dak does. I think if if they run the ball effectively, like I think they're going to, I think they're going to move the ball pretty pretty easily this entire game. Yeah. Okay. So, Cowboys offense versus Seattle Seahawks, I guess to sum it all up, protect Dak Prescott, like Adrian was saying. Just yeah. give him some time. Establish that running game because, like Adrian said, that this is a Seattle secondary that could get exposed yeah. by Amari Cooper, Cole Beasley, like you were su suggesting. Yep. So, we'll see if that can happen. But now to the juicy part of it. This is, where, this is what everybody wants to see. Yep. Russell Wilson and this offense going up against this stacked defense that the Dallas Cowboys mm. has. Now, in that right. Week 3 matchup, yeah. you guys didn't have Mark Cooper. Nope. They didn't have Doug Baldwin. And he's getting going now. He's back. He's healthy. He's ready to go. So, thank you. What do you think, man? This uh, Seattle offense against this defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, one more thing I wanted to add about uh, the, the, the offense against the Seattle defense thing. So, there's one player that we haven't talked about, and, and he's been a beast, und undrafted, Puna Ford. And, it, and if you put Puna Ford against Connor Williams and, and isolate that matchup, that mm -hmm. could be something that, that works in Seattle's favor. So just wanted to uh, point that out real quick. Well, if Zach Martin and uh, the Silo, I can't remember his last name. Uh, Sua Silo. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They, uh, Connor Williams is just going to be backup to them. I don't want Connor Williams playing. I think he, him playing guard is, a, is atrocious. Who, and, who's and a, who's a, is Sua, Sua playing the guard again then? Yeah. He's playing guard. I, he did get banged up, but I don't know about that one. Puna Ford's a beast. But no, Respect. Connor Williams, I agree. If Connor Williams is in there, Connor Williams, he gets overpowered too much. He's too small to play guard. I, yeah, if you remember, uh, if you remember, we did some like I think draft stuff. Or maybe I was talking to you. I wasn't a Connor Williams guy. If you remember? That's right. I, I remember that. I yeah. remember that. Yeah. I, I feel well, like he's more of a tackle uh, mm -hmm. than anything. I I don't know yeah. why they play him guard. He's like a right. He needs to be on the right right he's, side. I need the right tackle. Or he's I like run. Collins should have moved in guard and him be right tackle. I said that right when we drafted him, and then <laughs> yeah. no, they don't listen to me. Yeah. Mm. Well, anyway, going back to the other thing. Yeah. So so we're gonna get to Russell Wilson and, and, and this stuff. Uh, Chris Carson had a great year for, for Seattle. We talked about the offensive line, mm -hmm. but man, that that Dallas run defense has has been pretty stout. So. Uh, we, we talked about uh, on the Dallas side getting the third and shorts. Well, that's kind of key for Seattle as well. And, and are they going to be able to get third and shorts? Because they like to run the ball on first down. They like to run the ball on second down. They kind of have that old school type of mentality. And if they're in third and five, third and sixes, 
Uh, that's that's going to be in, in Dallas's favor and Demarcus Lawrence. Guys like that can just go after Russell Wilson. Uh, so that's that's going to be the first thing I'm going to keep my eye on is is how is Chris Carson going to be looking? Is he going to be able to establish that running game yeah. uh, against that Dallas defense? Right. Yeah. And that in that week three matchup, Chris Carson, he went off, man. He had did. 32 carries, 102 yards, and, and a touchdown. Yeah. And the the Seahawks are going into the playoffs here with the number one run game. Yeah. Yeah, their rush attack is number one in the league. That's that's so what scares me. This this is where the game's going to be won. Yeah. 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 Billy. Yeah, I, I think so, too. And, and when you look at that defensive line, it's a very good defensive line to get at a quarterback. But the one thing I love about Russell Wilson and the one thing that you can't game plan for is the way he can improvise, yes. keep plays alive with his feet, yeah. and make plays out of nothing. And that's the one thing I think, especially when you have an aggressive defense like Dallas that comes at you, a lot of times those kind of plays, especially for Russell Wilson, yeah. open up. And if and if and if he if he's doing that three four times with three four big huge plays like Dole Randall Cunningham, but if he does make some big plays like that, uh, they're going to move the ball. And I I think that they will be able to run the ball decently against Dallas. And I think Russell Wilson's a feat and his ability to improvise. I think you know I think it'll I think it'll be there all game long for him. And mm-hmm. I expect him to do that. You know what's going to be fun about that? Watching Jalen Smith and late Van Der Esch do a yeah. little bit. Quarterback spy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if, if there's a team that can combat Russell Wilson's legs, it's Dallas and the yeah. Wanda. Yeah. Those, yeah. yeah. And be, those uh, guys are fast. And I just saw Jalen Smith. I was watching the, the Giants game, and they highlighted the commentators that last year when Jalen Smith played, his mobility, especially out of cuts, wasn't there, right? He, he was fast, but he couldn't break down and cut and change direction. They showed him fake a blitz and then take off and follow the running back and didn't lose a step. Going the complete yeah. opposite direction, and that's not that shows that he is hundred percent back. And this guy, yeah. this guy's an athlete. He's he played it's... running back in college. This guy's got speed. Mm-hmm. So he, if anything, yeah. he needs a spy, Russell Wilson, in my opinion. Now bringing up LVE, LV did not start against Seattle last time we played him. Sean Lee was still playing. So yeah. this is a completely different defense with LV in there. We saw that when Sean Lee was in there, I felt like we were worse. Uh, weirdly to say, but LV is a lot better. One of the best defensive of rookies yeah. this year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is he is he hurt? What's his status no, right he's good. now? I'm, he's good. Uh, I'm good the, he got, last week, He uh, apparently his shin, he got hit, kicked in the shin like three times and back to back to play, back plays, and they just, at that time, it, it swelled up, so he just sat him. But they said he's fine. Uh, it's it's yeah. swelling went down. So Yeah, I, I might have not been a Connor Williams guy, but, but one guy I was a fan of was Leighton Van Der Esch. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God! I had a man so crush on that guy. Oh, I had a man something. crush on the dude. I was like, "This is the next Sean Lee right here. This is this is it." You know, you yeah. know who he looks like? Yeah. He looks like Brian Urlacher to me. That dude Does looks really? like Brian Urlacher. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this dude is everywhere. I mean, he is a genius. Yeah. I mean, his he, instincts, instincts are, are, great. are yeah, just out of the that's, charts. That's yeah. The first thing that you see when you watch the tape, yeah. you're like, "Man, he's always around the ball. Like yeah. he's literally like a magnet." Like, yeah. he's always there. Always um, there. Always. He's athletic. Making plays. He's got the athleticism and boot and the fluidity. He's, he's on Oh, man. We're ma- you're making me sick. All this <laughs> crazy <laughs> Dallas Cowboys talk. Nothing. All right. All right. It's all right. Who's right. right. oh, going to throw up all that eggnog uh, he's drinking? <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, now, no, yo. Now, getting to Carson, uh, Chris Carson here, I know we were talking about him, how he had a good day against Dallas. He, but he got 102 yards well, on well, 32 that's carries. 32 carries. That's that's like three point something yards of carry. So exactly. that's less. I'm looking at that. Is that that? I don't want to correlate to them just running all over us. I'm gonna correlate that with our offense not maintaining drives and our defense getting worn down, mm. and then them just keep running the that, ball. That's probably, that's true. That's 100. So, yeah. 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 We only put up 13 points on them when we first played them, and and. Most of that, all of that was mainly in the second half. We only had three points in the first half, and we had ten points in the second half. So hopefully we didn't score you that touchdown put, until the fourth quarter. Hopefully, you put thirteen points up on him again. <laughs> I don't want to hear that blasphemy. Uh, no, but yeah, that's going to be the big difference here: is our offense is helping out our defense, but our defense is going to be a lot better. I think they got a lot more swagger to them, mm-hmm. uh, a lot more energized. Are getting turnovers the last few uh, past five weeks. Mm-hmm. I- I'm loving it, man. I'm loving our defense versus Seattle, and we already have played Russell Wilson this year, so at least we understand his scramble, uh, scramble I, mobility. I'm going to say this right now. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys to win this game. He's a smart man. The Cowboys will win this game here at home. They're too much. They've only won, lost one game all year at home. 
The defense is so much better. The offense is going to be better than it was that week three matchup. Yep. Cowboys will win this game this coming up uh, Saturday night. I like it. Dude. I see the Philly guys. They're laughing over there. <laughs> Philly, what's so funny? Not funny. It's disgusting. Disgusting. I, <laughs> oh, when I look at this game, are you, are you when telling I look me? at this game, Seattle, I love Russell Wilson. I love what he does all the time. Oh. But I hate to do this. I hate Say it. it. And, and, and I'm not oh. going. I'm go rooting on. for Seattle. Let's make that clear. But I think Dallas is going to win this game. Oh, I, I think they're going to win this game. I have to take the Cowboys. I think at home they're playing Seattle for the second time. I think they're going to win a close game. I think it's going to be 21-17. I think Dallas is going to win. And I think it's going to be based upon the game that Zeke Elliott is going to have. I hate to do it, but I really feel like that's what's going to happen. Well, un- unfortunately, Philly 500, you've got to stop going on the Mark Holmes show because his, his movie <laughs> has corrupted your mind. You have gone, oh, you've gone ape shit. <laughs> I've gone nuts. I can't take. I I don't want to take them, but I, oh I just got to keep it real. He's a smart well, man. let me let me let me take it back to reality. So uh, they scored thirteen points in the first game. Well, they're going to score thirteen points again. Now here, here's the thing about this. This is going to be a defensive slugfest. So it's going to be 13-13 after four quarters of play. So we're going to have an overtime struggle in, in Big D. I think uh, both teams are going to actually kind of struggle to run the ball. I think Dallas will run the ball a little bit better. But the magic of Russell Wilson is going to get it done in overtime. 19-13. Seattle. I Ooh. hope so. I hope so. Shot. 13? That's it? 13? I think I think it's going to be limited possessions, eight possessions by each team. They're going to they're going to just slowly and methodically go up and down the field a little bit, uh, but they're going to be settling for field goals. It's going to be a struggle. So the funny thing is, is <clears throat> Dak Prescott and Russell Wilson pretty much have the same identical interceptions. Eight. Dak has eight. Russell Wilson has seven. So Russell, you know, everybody criticized Dak for turning over the ball. Russell Wilson's pretty much turning over the ball as just as much, not counting the fumbles. Dak has more passing yards than Russell Wilson. Ezekiel has more rushing yards, who led the league, by the way, than Car- uh, Chris Carson. Uh, I'd take Amari Cooper over Doug Baldwin, their number one receiver. I'm going to go Dallas. I'm looking at every single aspect of this game, and we have better players. Now, Russell Wilson obviously is better. I'm not saying Dak is better. I'm not, I'm not naive. I'm not kind of stupid. sounded like you were going that well, way. I'm just saying I'm looking at the stats. It's not like Dak can't put up numbers like Russell Wilson is. Now, the only issue that he's not is obviously Russell Wilson and them scoring more touchdowns in the red zone. But the thing is, we have one of the best red zone defenses. Yes. yes. So, I'm going to take my Cowboys. You know what? It's going to be a reversal. It's going to be 24-13. We're going to put up the same points <laughs> they did last time they pl- we played them. It's oh, going to be 24-13. shit. That's what I'm going to say. Okay. Mm. I hope I'm wrong. I hope <laughs> to God I'm wrong. At least I got King well, Ding back take, picking take Cowboys. Huh? I'm the only one here taking the Seahawks. I, I, I'm I sorry. Wow. I just, I can't, I got to keep it real. I, I think they're going to win. I hate to say it, but they're at home. I mean, I'm, I'm keeping it real by it's going to overtime. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, like, real I, dumb. I, I was expecting both of y'all to go to Seattle, so I'm glad I got one. Got I want to go to Seattle. I want to go to Seattle. My heart's with them. Dallas but, fans, yeah, you hear I can't that? I pick a tie. It's playoffs. It be a tie. So. Dallas fans, you hear that? Philly 500 just picked you up to win. Shut up. Let them know in the comment section. Tell them thank you. <laughs> shut we up. love He's you, Philly. Thank you. thank you. Thank you for choosing the Cowboys. He's a Cowboy no. lover this no, week. No, now yes. I want to change, change my pick. <laughs> I want to change my pick to Seattle. <laughs> because Adrian peer pressured me. This is peer pressure. I've been bullied. No, you can pick, pick the Cowboys. It's better off that you do. I hate the Cowboys, though. I hate the Cowboys. <laughs> Dallas still stinks. Everybody better know it. But I, I just got it. You just secretly, think want, but you secretly want to smash them in the NFC Championship. That's well, that that's true. I really do. That's what it is. That's, what, that's my dream, that we get to the NFC Championship and play nah, them. Too bad you won't get there. Uh, that's, uh, another, that's another video. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but, All right, there we go. John, us here at the Sports Fury. Philly 500, we're going with the Dallas Cowboys. 
sure NFC Cowboys North. I mean, NFC East, East. sorry. Yeah. Champion Dallas Cowboys. And Andrew Fed Q, he's the odd man out. He's gone with the Poon Fancy Hawks. Who can overtime? Who can afford an overtime with the strip sack? Of Ooh, that. Okay. Not right. that. All right. Okay. Right up, We're going to see. Right but that's our picks. We want to know your picks. Let us know in the comment section down below. And Dallas fans, don't forget to uh, show Philly 500 some love. Definitely Philly 500. Uh, sorry, Seattle fans. <laughs> I know I know you've grown accustomed to me and Sean picking against you guys. Sorry. So many weeks this year. But we're going to do it again. Yeah. Dallas Cowboys are going to get this win. Go gonna... Seattle! <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be streaming for this game. Uh, so you guys make sure you come hang out That'd with us. Awesome. Watch the, uh, Sean. Yeah. He's either going to get really happy. And if Adrian Fedq's right... Uh, he's gonna get really pissed off and start raging. Ah, either way, it's gonna be an interesting stream. Great, it's gonna be a great game either yes. way. And again, guys, if y'all haven't subscribed to these guys, go do it now. These guys are awesome. The links in the description down below. Go subscribe to Adrian FedQ over at the Bitterbirds, as well as Philly Five Hundred at Philly Five Hundred. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining us and talking the Seattle Seahawks versus Dallas Cowboys matchup in the NFC Wild Card. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah, a lot of fun. Oh, goodness. All right, Sean, we can get this one. All right, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Go, Seattle! <laughs>